Uno, dos, tres. It's been a really, really messed up week. Seven days of torture, seven days of bitter, and my girlfriend went and cheated on me. She's a California dime, but it's time for me to quit her. La la la, whatever. La la la, it doesn't matter. La la la, oh well. La la la, we're going at it tonight. Tonight, there's a party on the rooftop, top of the world tonight. Welcome back to learning surface area of 3D objects with Ruben. Okay, let's get started. Today, I'll demonstrate gaining surface area with 3D figures using AutoCAD. First off, let's explain some terms. First thing you'll need to know is the bases, which are basically all the sides that are used to classify the shape. Like this rectangle, and this rectangular prism, and this triangle, and this triangular prism. The lateral faces are any faces that are not the base. So these four sides right here will be lateral faces. These three sides right here will be lateral faces, but not the bases. The altitude of the prism is just the height of the whole figure. We use altitude because height's already taken by the bases. Next up are the lateral edges. They're just the edges that are not part of the base. So this edge right here will be a lateral edge. This would be a lateral edge. This one too. This one. Three three lines right here. The base edges are just the edges that are connected to the base. Like these four edges. And these four edges, these three edges, and these three edges. And finally, the lateral area is just the area of all the lateral faces together. And the base area is just the base areas added together. The surface area is the area of all the sides together. If you still don't understand, just ask your teacher. Now let's take a look at this cube. Cute, isn't it? Personally, I think it's one of the easiest things to solve. The equation for all cubes is surface area equals 2 base area plus lateral area, or surface area equals 6 times the side times height. And remember, the lateral area is perimeter times height. Both of these equations work. One is just simpler than the other. Now since this is this cube and one side is 8, all the other sides are going to be 8. So 2 times base area, which is 8 times 8, plus the lateral area, which is perimeter. The perimeter of the side is 32, because 8 times 4 is 32. And the height, which is again 8. You can write that all down. Or you can put 6 times a side, which is 8 times the height, which is 8. Okay. Then if you continue, you get 2 times 64 plus 256 equals 6 times 64. Okay, so far so good. Now if you continue that equation again, you get 128 plus 256, and on the other side you already finished, 348 feet squared. Well then let's continue with the first equation. You add them together and get 348 feet. See, both are the same, one's just shorter than the other. Now let's try a harder one. This triangle of prism is a good one. Now don't get discouraged with all the numbers. Let's look at this logically and with open minds. The equation for this again is surface area equals 2 base area plus lateral area. Or for triangular prisms, you can just make the equation surface area equals base area plus lateral area. The way you find the area of a triangle is the height times the base t divided by 2, as I just demonstrated up there. But when you look at it, since you're dividing then multiplying by 2, you can cross them out. So that 2 times 6 times 4 divided by 2 plus 16 times 10 goes to 6 times 4 plus 16 times 10. So you can take the long way and divide 24 by 2, which is 12, and then multiply it again and get 24 plus 160. Or you can just start it off without dividing by 2 or multiplying by 2 and get 24 plus 160. See? The same. And then we add them together and we get 184. But don't forget to add the units, feet squared. Okay, so you mastered those two problems. Let's look at one you'll see more often. This cylinder. Now I know what you're thinking. Where are the numbers? But look, there's words. Yes, I know. English in America. If you hit it that much, I can always make it Japanese. No? Okay then. Back to English. The circumference of the cylinder is 113.097335529232 centimeters, and the height is 3 less than the radius. Now what does this tell us? Well, if you look at the equation for circumference, the circumference equals 2 pi r. So, if we plug it in, we can find out what r equals. Well first, since we don't see a pi sign, we know that that number is already multiplied by pi. So we divide pi by both sides. And since we divide pi on both sides, the pi on the right side gets cancelled out. Leaving 113.097335529232 divided by pi equals 2 r. And if you put that into your calculator, 113.097335529232 divided by pi, it equals 36. 
So we, the equation now is 36 equals 2r, which you then divide both sides by 2, which cancels out the 2r, and you get 18 equals r. Now that we know that the radius is 18, we can plug it into the equation to find out what the height is. The height equals radius minus 3, which is 18 minus 3, which is 15. So now we know what the radius and height is, but we're still not done. We still have to find the surface area. The surface area of every prism is 2 base area plus lateral area, which is the lateral area is perimeter times height. To find the base area of the cylinder, you have to know the equation to find the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, and we have to multiply by 2. And to find the lateral area, you have to find the circumference, which is 2 pi r, and then multiply it by the height, which is 15. So if we plug in this equation, surface area equals 2 pi 18 squared plus 2 pi 18 times 15. Then when we plug that in, we get 324 times 2 times pi plus 270 times 2 times pi which is 648 pi plus 540 pi, which we then add together and get 1,188 pi, or 3,432.2120724647 cm squared. But I think we should just leave it in terms of pi. Isn't it nice when things just work? Congratulations on getting this far. I got some good news for you. You're halfway done. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is cones. No, they're not ice cream cones. Sorry for any confusion. Remember when I said the equation for all prisms for surface area is 2 base area plus lateral area, which is the perimeter time site? Well... I lied. Cone's equation for surface area is pi r squared plus pi r times the slant height. Now, what's the slant height? First, you need to know what the vertex is. It's that little point right there. It's the point opposite and furthest away from the base. The slant height is that side right there. The slant height is the line that connects the vertex with the base. This is also be a slant height. Now, this is the diameter. And since this is the diameter, we know if we divide it by 2, we would get the radius, which is 3. Now we know the radius is 3 miles. So if we plug it into the equation, surface area equals pi times 3 squared plus pi times 3 times the slant height, which we said earlier is 5 miles. Now if we simplify this equation, we get surface area equals pi times 9 plus pi times 15. We would then get surface area equals 9 pi plus 15 pi. Then when we add those together, we would get the answer is surface area equals 16 pi. Finally. Finally, pyramids. Their equation is surface area equals base area plus lateral area, which looks pretty similar to the triangle, except the lateral area is one half times the perimeter times the slant height. Now here are the measurements. Let's plug this into the equation. Surface area equals five times four, which is the base area, plus one half times 18 times seven, which is the perimeter and the slant height. Now you can multiply 18 by seven and then divide by two, or you can use distributive property 
and divide 18 by 2, making it 9, so now it's 9 times 7, which is 63. Then you would add them together and get the surface area equals 83 inches. Now, we're done with that. Remember when I said that we're done after this? Well, I died. We have one left. I'm going to show you when you would use the surface area in real life. So please stay or the cat gets it. Now, a real world example would be your house. And let's say you wanted to paint it red. Well, you would need to know the measurements of your house. And then we could plug those in to find the surface area of the triangular prism and the rectangular prism. Now, the equation again for rectangular prisms is surface area equals two base area plus the lateral area. And for triangular prisms, it's surface area equals base area plus lateral area. Now, when we plug in all this information in for the rectangular prism, the equation turns into surface area equals 2 times 25 times 20 plus 90 times 30. And surface area equals 25 times 15 plus 45 times 30. And then if we simplify it further, we get 2 times 500 plus 2,700 and 375 plus 1,350. Now, if we simplify this further, we get 1,000 plus 2,700, which equals 3,700 feet squared, and 375 plus 1,350, which equals 1,725 feet squared. Now I bet you're thinking that all you have to do is add the surface areas together and get 5,425 feet. Well, if you think that, then you're positively absolutely wrong. Let me explain why. You wouldn't paint the top of this rectangular prism or the bottom of this triangular prism, although the surface area of both figures is 5,425 feet. So to fix this problem, we have to subtract the equivalent of one base per prism, which the equation would be 30 times 25 times two, since they both have the same dimensions. And then when we simplify it, we get 30 times 50. And then if we multiply those together, we get 1,500. Then if we subtract 5,425 minus 1,500, we get 4,875 feet squared. And that's the surface area you're going to be painting. Now we're going to figure out how much paint we're going to need. Well, let's say that this one brand of paint, which sells at one gallon, covers 325 feet squared. And one gallon costs $10.75. To find how many gallons you'll need, you would have to take the amount that you're painting and divide it by how much one gallon covers which in this case equals 15. Then you will multiply 15 by the cost of one gallon, which in this case is $10.75. And when multiplied together, you get $161.25. Personally, I think better just to keep the house blue. 